Good afternoon and welcome to sunny Clanerin in Lurgan in Armagh. There's our sideline shot. We have a, two or three different cameras on the scene here for you today for this 2023 Ulster Senior Club semi-final. That is the moneyed last team and the girl taking the picture is Elaine Kelly, whose daughter Aoife unfortunately is not able to play with that group. She did her ACL and she's only about 16 years old. Fabulous player, played brilliantly last year in the senior final in Ulster and that was Money Glass's first time to be in that final so they're going for two in a row they have that experience behind them and of course a couple of weeks ago they provided a shock a fantastic result for them to beat Dunamoyne now let me give you one of the most impressive stats you'll ever get Dunamoyne have been in the last 18 Ulster senior finals what a record for that club but they're not in the final this year and that's because money lasts are on the scene there is a wind of change not just in Ulster but all over the country with the talent coming through the young players coming through and that's evident today in both teams Clan Aaron and money lasts for the record again no teams from down Arma or Antrim has ever won Ulster senior none of them Errigal Kieran have won it once, so that's the exception. But Dunham Wine have just owned this competition for a long time. But when it last went down two weeks ago into Dunham Wine and came away with a famous victory. And there are our low shots of the players warming up. That's Kieran McMahon out there getting those lovely shots. And you're right in the middle of the action. This is like Sky Sports coverage, isn't it? And we also have Christmas signs behind us as well, believe it or not, in one of the houses. They only took down the Halloween decorations, I think, yesterday and put the Christmas ones up. So all the cliches will come out. Will it be Christmas come early for Clan Aaron today? They are making huge moves to host this game today. They're very, very proud of it. And as you can see, the houses are right up on the pitch. It is a community-based club here and they have huge numbers and are doing fantastic work at youth level right across the board and they were worried about the weather this week but they have done absolutely brilliantly to get this game on aided obviously by the weather easing up a little bit and there are the money last girls look at those shots and those beautiful shots of St. Ergnitz out there warming up you're right in the middle of it here it's like the Sky camera and the guys on the pitch there getting the players coming off and so on before the game those are beautiful shots and We've pulled out all the stops today because this is the first ever time that the Ulster Senior Semi-Finals are being streamed. So we want to do it the right way. Um, we want to give you every option of seeing the game as well as you possibly can. So we have all angles covered and we also have the other semi-final on today. So we have a choice. So both games are on YouTube links. I'm sure you know them by now or they've been shared widely. And also this particular game, by the way, you can also watch on the Ulster Ladies Facebook page. So you have a choice. You can watch it on YouTube or the Ulster Ladies Facebook page. So go to either of those and I'll be checking there as well on the messages on those pages throughout the game. And maybe towards the end, we'll take your comments or suggestions for a player of the match, that kind of thing. Another sign of the wind of change, by the way, is that the banner from Clare beat Morn Abbey, another of the juggernauts a bit like Dunamoyne a few weeks ago in Munster. And I mention that because it's Ulster v Munster in the All-Ireland semi-finals. That's a couple of stages away, but still, And, sorry, I'm just getting a few messages relayed to me here. We will also be having a minute silence, not just for one, unfortunately, but two people. One is Sean Hart from Loch McCrory in Tyrone, and also with Canada GEA. He's been out there maybe 35 years and sadly has just passed away. Did tremendous work out there for the GEA, and his legacy, I think, in the end, will be the first All-Canadian Championships last year the first ever they usually go into the states but they had their own and sean was adamant that they would do that and the other is the madden secretary in our ma patrick grimley who tragically has passed away as well so there'll be a minute silence for them both teams today have Derry managers gregory mcgonagall with clan Aaron, he's from dungiven and charlie O'Kane from banagher and Derry, both from north Derry. the captains out in the middle and look look at those absolutely stunning shots i'm sorry to salivate a little bit over them but they're beautiful shots and we have a lovely camera out there our kids kieran's camera and he's taking lovely close-up shots there and you feel that you're right there with it that's eddie cuthbert the referee from down 
and his assistants, Kira Gilroy from down, and Rosine Hohe, who's come up all the way from Killy Beggs to be on the line today. And there is the toss. There's no wind today, it's, and the sun is sort of behind us over to the left, so the keeper on the right, as we are watching it, might have trouble with that sun if it stays out, so we'll see who wins the toss. That's Cathy Carey, of course who is the leader of this money last team, Antrim captain as well. And the captain for Clan Erin is Neve Henderson, their number 11, and Elaine in there with the pictures. And she's getting all those snaps and she'll post them later. And Kieran, as you see there in the shot, Clan Erin man himself getting in the middle of the action. So let's have a look at the teams. And I'm not sure which one we're going to start with. Probably Clan Erin. I'll just check my messages in case... I have got that, and I think I have. So let's look at the teams there. Indeed, it's Clan Aaron. Sinead Geary in the management as well. Now, I've just been told, actually, a correction to what I told you a minute ago before I go to the teams, that it is important. Our game is on YouTube. The Breda game is on Facebook. So Breda Air Eagle Kieran is not on YouTube. It is on Facebook. So if anyone's watching and wants to get that, it's on Facebook. This one's not on Facebook. This is on YouTube. Hopefully that will all sort itself out. Now the team there. Let's go from the back. Catherine Lawless is actually Catherine originally. Michael Linden as in Brian Michael Linden 1977 Armagh goalkeeper in the All-Ireland Final and her sister is Gráinne Carvel at number four. They're both Michael Lindens and Mags and other sister is in the subs. Then you have Clodagh McCabridge. She's the sister of Maeve at number 13. Clodagh's dad is from Cushendall hence the McCambridge name and Neve, or Maeve rather, has moved into the forwards with great success, scored three goals against Drumlane. And the rest of the players there, Ashling Flavel and Roisin Mulligan, Maeve Moriarty, of course, another 1977 connection with Paddy Moe, experienced player. Kate Toe, she's a sister in the sub, she's at Queen's. Avian Henderson is a sister of Neve at nine. Dervla Coleman and Neve Coleman are sisters, and Neve Murray is at number 14 and at number 15 Avian Donoghue and she's wearing 15 and she's only about 15 I think she is 15 and she'll be playing tomorrow night in the minor final for Clan Air as well could be a few changes there we'll wait and see and for money last let's look at them I think there'll definitely be a few changes there they've named for example Eleanor Mallon at number 10 I don't think she'll start and there might be another change or two so let's go through their team. Anna McCann in goals. Her sister Laura in the subs. Danielle Duffin is back from an ACL. Good to see her back and getting a starting place. Karen McKeefrey at four is a sister of Neve in the subs. Neve McIntosh is from Glenariff, Waterfoot. Daughter of the famous hurling commentator Johnny Mack. Rebecca Bradley, their pin there at number six. She's a stead, steady player in there. Cleona Griffin at seven. So many young players. Sarah O'Neill at eight, another one of those. And Cathy Kerry, the leader at nine. And Sarah O'Neill is relatives of the famous McCanns from Cargan. And Geraldine McCann, Eric O'Kearon. I wonder, could they end up playing them in the final? That could be interesting. The Devlins are twins at 11 and 13. And now we'll have that minute silence for Sean Hart and Patrick Grimley. And now we'll have the national anthem. I don't know if you're hearing anything. I'm certainly not. I know they have a tannoy system over there, but I'm not hearing the anthem being sung, but everybody is facing the flags. And there she is. She is singing. So 
So there we are, nearly ready now for this 2023 Ulster Club Senior Semi-Final. Just to repeat, this game is on YouTube. The other game, if you're looking for it, Breda against Errigal Kieron, is on the Ulster Ladies Facebook page. Not on YouTube, as we said earlier. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what has happened at the last minute, but there's been a bit of a switch there. But it is still available freely to watch. And I use the word free deliberately because the game is free to view don't be clicking on any links to pay for it so that's where it is don't be panicking if it's not coming up for you or if you're wondering where it is on youtube we did tell you it's there these things happen in this business we're doing our best to bring the two games to you and we are so clan Aaron against money glass on youtube only and i am checking the other game and the message is there and watching the pictures and they're having their anthem at the minute so I am across that one as well and they are about to start there and we are about to start here in sunny Clan Aaron. Now I'm looking around to see if there's any late changes and I do expect a few of those and tactically we're expecting Clodagh McCambridge to pick up Orta Printer and maybe Maeve Moriarty for Clan Aaron to play in a sweeper role in there. Number 8 for Clan Aaron. I see Tierna Grimes has gone to right half forward and number 18 for Clan Aaron and that is Laura McCann sister of the goalkeeper and she is in there at midfield as you can see. So I did expect changes and there they are. There might be one or two more. Let's see where we go. We're off and running. History today. The first time that these semi-finals have been live streamed. Both being live streamed at the same time. This one on YouTube and the Breda Arigal Kieran game on Facebook, Ulster Ladies Facebook. This is Maria O'Neill, such a dangerous player, and she loves the goal, and she's getting through there, or trying to get through. Comes back out, and Orla Prenter takes it and puts it wide. And that's not like Orla Prenter, but that's a missed opportunity in the first 30 seconds for Money Glass. But a statement of intent. And talking of statements, their victory over Dunamoyne. That was a statement victory and could be a watershed in Ulster Ladies Club football. Now, let's, let's look at the press there from our high shot to see where this is going to go. You can see Money Glass players waving and running and trying to press, and they are going to win it from that as well. And that looks like one of the players that was named in the subs. It's 20-something, but has she been turned over there? She has. Clan Aaron have fought there to win it back, and it's already you can see there's a few pretty physical exchanges, but it's Clan Aaron, the home team, coming away with it. I wonder will home advantage tell for them. This is a great run. I think it's Avine Donoghue. It is the 15-year-old, and she's run, what, 40, 50 yards there eventually. She's run into a blue wall. Eddie Cuthbert watching closely as Clan Aaron come all the way back out to Neve Coleman. Will she get the first score of the game? Cathy Carey is back there. And Money Glass, you can see the way that they're set up trying to stop. This is Maeve McCambridge coming back out to Flavelle, the number two. The pattern of the game these days is that you can see number twos and fours up in the attack. And it's Clan Aaron trying to work the ball now, just keeping possession. And Money Glass sitting in there with their structure. Now they have left three players up. But they're obviously saying that when Clan, Clan Aaron have possession, they're going to sit inside their 45 and wait for them. This is Flavelle. And they're just going to come back out. It's always nice to get your hand on the ball early, so they won't mind this. There's Le Coleman. Can they pick off a point? This is Henderson. I just thought you might go for a score, but that's a beautiful ball inside to Neve Coleman, and the shot comes in, but it's easily dealt with, with by Anna McCann. And hold on, what is the referee going to give here? Because one of the players has gone down, and she's got up pretty quickly, and it's a penalty, and I did suspect that she, he might do this. And there you see the goalkeeper crashing into Maeve McCambridge, and Eddie Cuthbert, the way that he turned, and knew that there was going to be danger here for Money Lass. And as you saw in the replay, the keeper came out and collided with the forwards and he said that is a penalty. So a huge chance here in the third minute. It's going to run into the fourth minute and it's going to be Neve Murray, the blonde bombshell, who won player of the month a couple of months ago nationally. Neve Murray against Anna McCann. Is it going to be the first score of the game? And it's low into the net, beautifully buried and Anna McCann was able to just watch it. She wasn't able to get a hand on it. Neve Murray give her the eyes and Murray in a hurry. What a start for Clan Aaron, the home team. They lead by a goal. 
Now, it was a bit of a gift the way it handed to them, and they'll be delighted with that, and money last might feel that was a little bit of a tough decision, but there weren't too many complaints either, and there's a very similar kind of collision there in the middle of the field, and the referee hasn't given that one. Well, it looked very similar to me, but these days, you never know after watching Newcastle against Arsenal, I've kind of given up on trying to figure out these sort of things, but yeah, penalty given there in the first two to three minutes, the goalkeeper will say, well, I just got the ball and she was there, but that's the letter of the law. And Eddie Cuthbert is the man in charge. Those are the rules. Rebecca Bradley, number six for money glasses. as they try to recover from that. The run is from Sarah O'Neill, sister of Maria, two fabulous young players. Cathy Carey, the fulcrum of the attack, and she tries to play the ball in there and looking for Brona Devlin, but over her head and goes tamely out of play. The sun is in the eyes of the goalkeeper for Money Glass, so that's Sarah or Anna McCann over to our right. So it's probably more difficult in the first half here for Money Glass playing into the sun. Maybe that explains that pass a second ago and indeed Orla Prenter's kick. But Clan Aaron playing tigerishly as you would expect in front of their home crowd and that super little stand over on the far side and it was a turnover that led to their first phase of attack and now there's room for them with Neve Coleman here to attack there's a lot of Neves in their attack and this now is Avine Donoghue she is a bit of a flyer isn't she and she's very young but that's easily been picked off and it's Cathy Carey now who will try to break and I can see ahead of her that Orla Prenter is trying to get a bit of space but Clodagh McCambridge is her shadow. Now here's the one ball between them and there is Clodagh McCambridge stepping out in front of Orla Prenter and that's exactly what the manager will want her to do today and it's ended now with Neve Murray getting the ball and that is the first set two between Prenter and McCambridge and McCambridge definitely won that. Prenter just sitting waiting for it and McCambridge nipped in that's going to be a real key battle between those two. That's 1-0 to McCambridge. Long way to go, though. This is Tierna Grimes. She'll go for her own point and might get it, actually. Is that inside the post? That is. That's a beautiful point. Her camera right behind it. Beautifully taken. And that's 1-1 for Clan Aaron. And they have made a very bright start in the bright conditions. Great finish just inside the post. Maybe that's local knowledge that helps. She knew where to put that exactly. Good kick out from Sarah McCann. Picked out her number six, Rebecca Bradley. And now it's Money Glass on the attack. And that's Kerry getting in inside to number 11, Devlin. One of the Devlins. One of the twins. That's good tackling. It's a brilliant play by Clan Aaron defensively. And they've got their players back now. And Money Glass have yet to settle. But here is Cathy Kerry. Now she drops the shoulder there. Throws a dummy. Comes inside. And now it is a chance for a score. But that's a poor effort, actually. And that's three chances now, really, that Money Glass have had. One has gone wide, and one has dropped into the keeper's arms, and one has dropped tamely over the head of the fullback and then rolled out. So they have a bit of work to do up there. They haven't got firing yet the, no the way that we know that they can. Clan Aaron, though, maybe the toss was important. They're playing from left to right with the sun pretty much behind them and home advantage, and it's a great start for them. And I just see Paddy Moriarty right in front of me here. He's the father of Maeve, number six. Famous for the 1977 All-Ireland final against Dublin when he scored a fantastic penalty in the first five minutes or so. And famous for a lot of great displays for Antrim, or for Armagh over those years. Money Glass now trying to get on the board. Brona Devlin and a kick comes in from distance. And that's another one dropping into the arms. And they haven't been able to get the ball to their main shooter, Orla Prenter, just once and she put it wide. So Clan Aaron have done their homework. Well, I guess it wasn't too hard to do your homework when you look at this team and you see how good Orla Prenter is. But Clota McCambridge is definitely doing her job very well so far. So it's working out for them. 19, by the way, you see out there, Danielle Connolly for Money Glasses also in their starting lineup. So it's another change that I've noticed just now. Clan Aaron pressing, Money Glass holding firm. Flavelle just pops it back. They'll take their time. That's a great ball in as well, and it's Neve Coleman leaving it off. This is a terrific football, and it's put over the bar by Neve Henderson. It's Neve to Neve, and it's second point, and could have been a goal there. 
thought there might be, but very creative, good, fast forward play. And this start is bound to give Clan Aaron a lot of confidence. I would have thought that money last would be favourites purely by the fact that they beat Dunhamoyne a few weeks ago. But Clan Aaron have started superbly. They are five to the good. Now from these kickouts, tricky again because of the sun, but she does well there, or does she? Well, the referee says no foul there, though it's um, a moneyed last player has gone down from that challenge. Referee says it's fine. Now they persist and they do get the ball. This is 19, Danielle Connolly. Comes inside but faced up by two, three players. Now there's a foul. Just checking the other game, by the way, and unfortunately under the Facebook and the comments there, there's a few of those live streaming dummy ones that are trying to hack in there and get you to pay don't click in any of those we're going to delete those comments underneath that on the facebook page for you don't worry and i'm just watching that game and seeing that it is one point all in that game this is tierna grimes clan Aaron once again have repelled a money glass attack and they're kicking the ball around rather confidently around this middle area no panicking and they've had that dream start so they're in a very good position at the minute they've only ever been in this semi-final once and they lost so this would be new territory if they get into the final this could be a famous historic day for the home team now they're looking to get inside i'm looking at the setup off camera and i can see clan Aaron trying to get through but money last of a couple of sweepers in there and now Kathy Carey has pounced on that loose ball she's been held up but she is very good at holding on to the ball and the referee has eventually given her a free has he I think he has yeah but what has he decided actually it's a free the other way is he given it for over carrying or something I'm not quite sure that's puzzled me that one yeah, but it's a free for Clan Aaron and it's symptomatic of the way the game's going everything is going well for them it looked like Kathy Carey had been fouled to me and that one is a free in. And this is Clan Aaron outside the D, but could be scorable. She's trying to steal a yard or two, and the referee says get back, but she'll still steal a yard or two like most free takers. That's a bit of a bugbear of mine. They don't kick the ball from the exact spot. Look, she's gone well inside, nearly at the D. Could make all the difference. Don't think she needed it though. She's got plenty of height on it and she's put it over. And it's six points to nil. One three to no score for Clan Aaron. And it's already looking like a tough day at the office for Money Lass. They have not got firing yet at all. But this is good play coming out of defence to Cathy Kerry. To Neve McIntosh. Five, but playing on the left. They're working very hard to get up the field, but look how hard Clan Aaron are working. They're trying to get Orla Prenter on the ball, and finally they do get her on the ball, but a long way from goal, and she's followed by Clodagh McCambridge. Bangs it down into the corner to Brona Devlin, but that's gone out of play as well, and it's just not happening for Money Glass so far. There's people around the place are a little bit confused, I think, because the Breda game is only on Facebook. So I'm just making a note here to tell people while I'm doing this. Uh, hopefully the word will get round. People are a little bit confused and some of those terrible scammers trying to get in there as well. So as I say, we're trying to remove those comments as well from the Facebook page. But the Breda Arigal Kieran game only on the Ulster Ladies Facebook page, not on YouTube. So go there to watch that game. This game is on Ulster Ladies YouTube, and that was a foul there, so a free for Money Glass. That's Orla Prenter with her second chance at a score, but quite a distance out, just inside the 45. When she goes short, that's sensible to Cathy Carey, who's also always going to be available and looks to give it back to Orla, but she has a shadow today, as she is well used to. Uh, Cloda is proving very difficult for her, but here comes the number 12, Alicia Boyd. Back out to Cathy Carey, and she's throwing shapes all over the place, but that is another ball. Is it going to drop for them? Oh, and it's well dealt with again by Clan Aaron, and 
Only Glass just really struggling to get it together up there. And they did come back, I think it was last year's semi-final from six points down, but it's going to be a long and difficult journey to do that against this vibrant, young and creative Clan Aaron team. Avine Henderson, number nine. Carrying it forward because Money Glass just dropped right into their 45 when Clan Aaron get the ball around there, and that's what's happened again. Number two is an advanced position again, that's Flavelle, but they just come back out and steady themselves. The other game is not three to not one for Breda against Errigal Kieron. As I say, not on YouTube. Just go to the Ulster Ladies Facebook page to watch that game. That's good play by Maeve McCambridge. Gets it to Neve Henderson, but her kick is going to the right and going wide on this occasion. But they're getting through and they're getting into much better shooting positions than Money Lass. Anna McCann anxious to get underway and get the ball out as quickly as she can. And you get some urgency into your team here struggling. Her kickouts have been quite good, but not this one. Oh, it will drop actually for Danielle Connolly. She transfers it quickly, but look at the challenging coming in here from the defence. That's superb work once again by the Clan Aaron defenders. I think it was Kate Toe who got out in front that time, and the moneyed last forwards are really struggling against this superb Clan Aaron defence. Hard to believe we're now a full quarter into the game and Money Glass have not scored. That's testament to the hard work by the Clan Aaron team overall. Number 20 is in there for Money Glass as well. That's Leah Stewart. That's one of the ones I did expect. One of their super young players. Now Cathy Carey just trying to keep possession for her team and trying to work something. But it's very, very hard, especially when challenges come in like that from Neve Coleman. And they're meeting everything that Money Glass have to throw at them. Another tough challenge coming in there on Neven McIntosh. We got the, but you got the ball away to Kathy Carey. And there is that tough tackling again from Kate Toe. But Marie O'Neill has got away this time. And she is always good for a goal, whether it's county or club. But this time has to go back. Now Prender, will she get the first score of the game for her team? And they really need this, but it comes off the post. That could easily have dropped into the net, but didn't. So agonisingly close, and Money Glass could really, really have done with that. Still without a score after 16 minutes. Unbelievable. When the ball gets into this middle area, it just dies a little bit, the game. Because Money Glass just drop back, and Clan Aaron just say, OK, we'll hold on, we'll keep it. Just checking on my phone here, the other game, to keep you abreast of what's happening there. Breda leading three points to one last that I saw. And it's still 3-1 from what I can see. But here, 1-3 to no score for Clan Aaron against Money Lass. The winter sunshine suiting the Armagh girls. Neve Henderson now. And although Money Glass have been sitting back, Clan Aaron have picked them off and found ways through. A little bit fortunate, I think, to get the penalty, but they did have another couple of chances that could have been goal efforts. Now that's going to drop in high, and that's nearly into the net. Oof, Anna McCann had to watch that. I'm going to say the sun was in her eyes, but it looked to me like that could have easily dropped in the net, but she just got enough on it to put it over the bar instead of under, and that would have put nine in it. Anna survives, Money Last survived, but they're still seven down. I think they would have anticipated that in their worst dreams. Nearly 18 minutes gone, and that's easily picked up by Dervla Coleman for Clan Aaron. And here they come again, looking for another score. All their forwards are buzzing. Cambridge leaves it off, and Money Last just can't get a hand on them. There's always someone available, and there's good quick kick passing as well. And this is Donahoe. And 
challenge comes in on her. Referee says no foul. And now he decides free out possibly. Yeah, free out. Now, can Kathy Carey burst clear? Well, she's a playmaker, but look, she's struggling there. She's got several tackles on her, stopping her, and lots of Clan Aaron players back already. And Money Glass have got several players stuck in their own defence, not getting up the field. And there's a high challenge coming in. And the referee, well, there was one a few minutes ago we gave a free for, but that one looked a little bit worse. And I wonder, is that a tick or a yellow? And well, it looks like just a tick to me, but he's maybe getting a little bit of advice on it as he... He's gone back to talk to her. The body language on my experience would tell me that this is looking like a yellow card. They certainly have been tackling, shall we say, enthusiastically, but that was a little bit wild. And indeed, midfielder Avian Henderson has been sin -binned. Will the tide turn a little bit now for Money Glass? 19 minutes gone without a score but now they have an extra player Money Glass will he be lifted by that Sarah O'Neill gives it to Connolly to Prenter a long way from goal to Cleona Griffin off she goes Devlin comes out to meet it but that was a little bit lax They've had to switch the point of attack all the way out to Rebecca Bradley now. And try again. Clan Aaron have got 14 players back. Only one left way, way up in the forwards. Blanket defence as Cathy Carey tries to find a way through and tries to pop it over, but it's Maeve Moriarty using all her experience to get in there. Well, I actually said 14 players back. They're actually down a player, so it would have been 13 back. But it still did the job for Clan Aaron. And tactically... The plan is working perfectly for the home side here. They are 1-4 to no score to the good. Carey. Gives it to Sarah O'Neill. Money Glass really need a break here, but they can't get through. Prenter nearly out at halfway. That's a sign of the way things have been going. They can't get her on the ball. She's had to come so far out. She gives it to Alicia Boyd, and she is fouled. And Prenter stepping up to take it. They're not panicking, but they must be very concerned on the sideline. Charlie O'Kean and Donald Laverty. There is Prenter putting the ball into where you would expect her to be. And Gronia Carville just slid there, I think, in the conditions into Devlin. And this will be Prenter surely, surely getting the first score of the game for her team. And boy, do they need it. So Orla Prenter, sensational talent, steps inside again, takes a few steps, puts it over easily, and at last, after 21 and a half minutes, Money Glass are on the board. Now, we haven't seen too many kickouts at that end. What's the referee waving for here? It's a substitution. There is indeed. Money Glass are making a change. 20 is going off. That's Leah Stewart. And number five, Neve McIntosh is maybe switching wings. I don't think to be taking her off. Maybe switching her over to the right-hand side. And they brought on number 17. That's Neve Neeson. So money last realising they need to make changes. But Clan Aaron have won it from the kick-out. And the challenge comes in from Connolly. But this Clan Aaron team are very good at taking the challenges and the physical exchanges. And they've dominated a lot of this game and held possession very comfortably. 22-22 on the clock. 1-4 to a point is the score. Just checking the other game for you. Still 3-1 from what I can see. There must have been another score by then, by now. But seems to be three points to one to Breda. But it's uh, quite hard to follow while I'm still talking to you about this game. This is Roisin, or, uh, yeah, Roisin Mulligan, number five. Gets it to Dervla Coleman. So the 14 players of Clan Aaron. She gives it to Neve Henderson. They're just popping the ball around. 
and enjoying themselves out there and just owning this game at the minute. And Money Glass just can't really get their hands on the ball and when they do, they're being stopped in their tracks. Just haven't been able to get their game going at all. Clan Aaron. And the support coming now from Kate Toe. Off the shoulder, trying to make a breakthrough. This is great play by her, giving it to Flavel. Now, Money Glass come in to try and challenge. And it just breaks. Everything's breaking for Clan Aaron. It's been a great first half for them. This is Tierna Grimes. Tries her luck from distance, but that's going to go well wide. So 24 minutes gone. 1-4 to a point. This is not what we expected. Kick out now from Anna McCann, but there's another ball on the pitch, so she has to get rid of that. I gather we're having streaming problems from the other game. Apologies for that. I'm not quite sure what the problem is, but I'm sure the lads are doing their very best down there to get it going for you. Now the ball kicked off. 24 and a half minutes gone. No such problems here, thankfully. Connolly available, short, and Clan Aaron just letting them have the ball. But Money Glass look a little bit perplexed at the minute. Cathy Clark, or Cathy Carey, so often the player that gets things going for them. She's doing her level best. This is a bit better by them, but then, as I say that, the kick nearly went astray. Alicia Boyd does get it in the end. But they just haven't been able to knit it together like they usually do. And there's a little bit of urgency now that looks like they are trying to do their level best. They're trying to work their way through. This is more like them. This is Kerry, but they're coming up against an orange wall in there. And the decision is going for them, I think. Yep, Prenter is going to get a chance here to get their second point of the game. And the referee puts his boot in to say where it is, but he's already been maybe tricked is a bit hard way hard on the forwards, but yeah, she's taken her from the exact right spot and it's going to drop in. But there's been a couple of times where the forwards have definitely taken a few yards on it. Maybe he's learned from that. Now inside, oh, there's a chance and it's dropping towards the keeper, but Catherine Lawless takes it easily. And it's been one of the stories of the first half. Molly Glass have dropped so many balls into the keeper's arms and maybe, you know, it's sometimes when you go to a pitch you're not familiar with and the sun, as I say, in the eyes, but those are excuses, really. They should be going over the bar and it's not like money at last. They're usually free-flowing and free-scoring. Donoghue. McCambridge. And look how vibrant and lively Clan Aaron and inventive they are when they get up into the attack. And there's a lovely ball. Oh, what a pass in there to Tierna Grimes and she's through. And it's not even half time, but she could have got a goal there that would nearly finish this as a contest. And I'm saying that with a little bit of hesitancy, but still it's been a half of complete domination by Clan Aaron. And there is another point at the end of it as the sun goes in, making it a lot darker here. But it is 1-5 to 1 point. It's very bright for the home team. So you get a ball dropping into the keeper's arms at one end and fired over the bar at the other. That little cameo, if you like, of 30 seconds sums up the first half. Another tough challenge coming in and another free. It's been the pattern as well. Tough tackling from Clan Aaron, giving away quite a lot of frees, but they're stopping Money Glass from flowing. And Money Glass, look at that for tackling. That's not fouling. That's just tough, close, enthusiastic tackling by Maeve McCambridge. Cleona Griffin persists and now it is Prenter. They need a big show out of her and that could drop into the net. It doesn't as she gets a free but you saw the way she was being pursued by three or four Clan Aaron people and eventually got her kick her way under serious pressure. But Clan Aaron are playing today like woman possessed and they have nullified the threat so far of Prenter and the entire team of Money Glass, who have yet to score from play. Now, that looks like it might go over. It might even drop in the net, and it's dropped out over the bar. Two points for Money Glass, both from freeze. They're trying to stay in this game. I think their management at this point will be wanting to get them in at half time. Twenty-eight minutes exactly on our clock. And 
hearing. There's more difficulties with the other stream. I think it's four points each in the game, if that helps. Not sure, maybe there's a connection issue at Arigal Kieran. Now, Cathy Carey's coming over to take this. It was won by Danielle Duffin in there, and she leaves it for Cathy to take. They've had a lot of freeze money last, but they'd rather move the ball quickly, and there's a high, hopeful ball into the full forward area, and they're hoping it can drop for them, and it drops to Devlin. And she got a free in. She has got a free in. And Clan Aaron have been guilty of fouling a lot, it has to be said, when money last run at them and in that position as well. They've defended very well at times, but they've also given away, given away a lot of frees. And they've been punished twice, and they're surely going to be punished again here. I'm not quite sure what happened there, actually, because there was, well, there was definitely a foul there. But before that, a couple of players just fell over with a high ball coming in. But contrast that with the way Clan Air and Flow in their attack, much more creative and finding spaces and nice angled passes. That was just a high ball in there. 5-4 to Breda now in the other game. We'll hopefully get this all steadied up at half time. So apologies again if the other game is not flowing so well for you on the live streams. But this one is flowing nicely for the home team. Crowd getting behind Clan Aaron. And no wonder. They are leading by five points. They're going looking for another score now. The sun has gone in. There's a plane overhead. And Clan Aaron have got a free if they need it. But there's a lovely ball again. Again, they're just finding players all over the pitch. And the referee's going to bring it back for a free to Clan Aaron. I apologise again for anybody trying to watch the other game that maybe come over to this one. I don't know, I'm not at that game, but unfortunately we're having difficulties with that one, whatever the story is. But there's no difficulty there with that finish. That was superb from Neve Murray from distance. I think that's the second one she's put over. And that has made it 1-6 to 3, a six-point lead as we are in added time at the end of the first half for Money Glass. And indeed, that is half time. Only the 40 seconds added on and a very, very satisfactory first half for the home team. A little bit of a surprise. We expected Money Glass to do much better than that. But Clan Aaron owned that first half and Money Glass were stifled. They hadn't been able to score, haven't been able to score a single point from play. So there's a lot of puzzled faces there. They need to get in. They need to have a chat with their management. They need to work something out. Maybe they'll be better playing from left to right. If that sun comes out again, it would be behind them. But there's a lot more to it than that. Clan Aaron have been excellent in the first half. Fair play to them for the way they approach the game. And their game plan has worked out absolutely perfectly. And Money Glass, after that stunning victory the last day, are going to have to pull this one out. They did, I think, last year in the semi-final come from six points down to win and get through to the final but they have all to do today that's it for half time we'll be back in about six or seven minutes we'll go and see what's happening with the other stream and try and get that sorted out for you but this one is certainly been going well i think as a stream and a connection and it's one six to three at half time for clan Aaron.
Welcome back to Clan Aaron, where the home team are out on the pitch in little huddles over to our right and left. They are out. They're happy. They're leading by six. Money Glass have not come out yet, and I think that tells a story. They are uh, obviously having a few extra words. There's the referee, Eddie Cuthbert, coming out as well. And I'd say their management have had a lot to say at halftime. Here they come. From their point of view, it would be an awful shame to have stopped the juggernaut that is Dunamoyne from reaching a 19th Ulster final in a row. But from their point of view, to then not reach the final themselves would be extremely disappointing, to put it mildly for them. But they are really up against it here. They're in the Lion's Den in Lurgan, and Clan Aaron are playing superbly. Clan Aaron have never been in the final. This opportunity awaits them in the second half. Six points up. The other game is now on Facebook and hopefully will resume for the second half without issues. We apologise again for what's happening there. We're not there. We have men there running the show and unfortunately there were a lot of problems in the first half and uh, a lot of you will have missed it. At least you weren't paying for it. At least it was free, but that's no consolation to you. We'll hopefully have those problems ironed out for the second half and you'll be able to watch it as well as this one. So that game available on Ulster Ladies Facebook only. And we are on Ulster Ladies YouTube. So hopefully we'll follow both games in the second half smoothly. So 2023 Ulster Club Senior Semi-Final. The winners to play Eric Kieran or Breda whoever comes through that semi-final. The sun is back out, and it was an advantage in the first half for the team playing from left to right. That was Clan Aaron. What can Money Glass do in the second half? They have lots of terrific players, and they have that outstanding talent in Orla Prenter in particular. But she and they were not able to do what they usually do in the first half. What can they do in the second half? This is a little bit better, working it through the lines, but Clan Aaron working so hard. Now they get it to Cathy Carey. This is where she looks for Prenter. She puts it high in there. That's not Prenter. The twins are in there, actually. That's the Devlins, or one of the Devlins and Maria O'Neill, but they don't get the ball. And that was just a hit and hope thing in there. And not usually, like Cathy Carey, it has to be said. And it wasn't Prenter she was aiming the ball at. So, again, at the start of the second half, Molly Glass just not flowing like they do. And Clan Aaron, when they get the ball are just firing it around confidently again from side to side and making money glass go back and they kill the game and they keep possession. That has been the way it has been going. And that's the way it started again. Money glass drop very deep when this happens and just let Clan Aaron have it. And Clan Aaron, well, they say, OK, we'll just take our time here, pick it off, and there's no pressure really on the Clan Aaron players until they come a little bit closer to goal whereas when Clan Aaron attack or rather when they defend they close down the money glass attackers much further out the field they tackled much harder all over with three or four players here they come now Clan Aaron oh, well, that's a great effort from distance might even go over and that's superb from Tierna Grimes one of their many young fantastic players and she was allowed to run quite a distance there soloing, soloing on her right put it over with her left fantastic score and the second half has started the way the first half ended Anna McCann gives it out to Neve McIntosh instantly closed down this is what I'm talking about Clan Aaron closed down further up the pitch Neve McIntosh runs into a wall of three players has to go sideways to Connolly Pops it inside. A lot of these balls have been inaccurate, but this is a bit better. This is Cleana Griffin now, but where's she going with it? She needs a runner. She gets a runner. And are they, they going to get a point at the end of it? And it's gone to the right, and it's gone wide. And compare that with the chance at the other end that was expertly taken. That was rushed a little bit. And you can understand that they're anxious to get going, but they are not comfortable on the ball in attacking positions. Well, in any positions at the minute. They've laboured to get forward and they just don't seem to have the same vibe, if I can put it that way. Boyd gives it back out to Griffin. Carey. And she goes for her own score, but it's not going to do. And how many times have Money Glass done that today? 
And they have the sun on their backs, and if that had been on target, they might have given the keeper a problem, but they have really been the architects of their own downfall a lot with their shot selections and their passing selections. Lawless. Lawless Michael Linden. Where is she going? Famous clan error name. She goes short, and there's a sign of their confidence. She just gives it to Neve Coleman, even though she was surrounded by players, and she easily took it away. And then Dervla Coleman, and she gets her free. And all over the field, Clan Aaron players just have their tails up and are playing really, really well. The moneyed last goal over to our left. Covered in shadow. Oh, you thought that was going to be intercepted there by Bradley. It's not, but eventually Connolly comes in for moneyed Lass. They really need a lift, and then maybe they can just get going. But look at that. Pass into the back, that's always a bad sign. They're not connecting properly, or as they usually do. And there's that ball into the forwards, and there's a little nudge there. That was cleverly played by Brona Devlin to read that, but look at the tackling coming in from McCambridge to come to the rescue. Devlin having to work hard, and again, the shot selection is poor, and it looked almost like a pass, but I think it was maybe a score, but again, just rushed a little bit, and they're just so anxious to try and get a score. But Money Glass, amazingly, are 35 minutes into this game and have yet to score from play. In the other game, Breda lead Errigal Kieran 5-4 at halftime. Ty Holland 1-7, Dunlow 2-7 and carried off not 6, Labby not 3. That's the scores from the other games. We'll be keeping an eye on the other stream and hopefully it will not freeze in the second half. Doesn't seem to be back on yet, but hopefully... There's no problems there, and you're able to watch that one. Just trying to refresh it on my phone here as I watch this game. That's going to be a free for Clan Aaron. It doesn't appear to have started yet for the second half. Maybe they have more issues. Hopefully not. Anyway, we are flowing nicely here, and so are Clan Aaron. Mulligan. Coleman, Henderson, these familiar names to everyone in Clan Aaron, and I think they will be to many other people the way this team is playing. This is McCambridge, sister of the fullback Cloda. The McCambridges are causing damage at both ends of the pitch. Their dad from Cushendall, hence the McCambridge name. And look at this, composed in the ball, plenty of options, passing it around, Mulligan available. They're just switching the play and Money Glass just look a bit leggy. Low scoring in their last game, of course, and they put a huge effort to beat in Dunamoyne, and they've given away a free, and that's surely another score. They just can't get close to this energetic team. Now, it looks as I refresh my feed on Ulster Ladies Facebook that the other game is about to get underway in the second half. As... Murray puts it wide. That's a little bit surprising. It's not a little bit, it's a big bit surprising, to be honest. Don't know what happened there, right in front of the posts, but she put ones from further out over the bar in the first half. That's a bit of a let off for Money Last, but they're still a long way behind. Seven points, and more importantly, the pattern continues where they win the ball from the kick out, although I think this is going to be a Money Last decision. No, it's not, it's switched again. Well, when it's going for you, it's going for you. And that seems to be the way. The referee's maybe going to hop it, though. Money Glass just cannot get a break today. Eddie Cuthbert waits, and Clan Aaron are ready. And now Connolly comes in. Yeah, so the other game, I'm delighted to say, is now on Facebook. I'm watching it here myself, so hopefully that will go smoothly. Let's concentrate on this game, Clan Aaron get the decision again. 1-7 plays 3. Clan Aaron have won 12 Armagh titles in 18 years. But only once have they been in an Ulster senior semi-final before today. 
They've given that away though to Neve McIntosh and money last of a chance to break. Here's Cathy Carey. And you can tell that Clan Aaron have their homework done because Cathy has stopped in her tracks right away. She still gets the ball away to Prenter. Again, a long way from goal, but for once she gets away from Clodagh McCambridge with a little shimmy and off she goes. This is more like her. They need a score from her. That is vintage. Orla Prenter. They need a lot more of that today. That's the first time we've seen her. And they need more of that. That's her first score from play in the 39th minute of the game. Now from the kick out, Money Glass need to build on this. They need to press. They need to prevent Catherine Lawless from finding an orange jersey. But she puts it way over to that right-hand side. And she's found Neve Coleman as the sun goes in. It's gone very dark all of a sudden here. And that was too easy for them to get that ball. From a Money Glass point of view. Number 30 is on. That's Katie McCluskey for Money Glass. Coleman. And that's Clan Aaron. Even when they get a little bit of a setback, they just seem to get out very easily. And then they seem to just own the ball and have it for as long as they like. Mulligan coming forward, bursting through tackles, no problem to her. Nicely laid off by Henderson as well. And this is a chance. Oh, and she blasted over the bar, Maeve McCambridge. I thought she was going to go under and kill this game. But what a response by this Clan Aaron team. They are taking everything Money Glass can throw at them and they're coming back with more. We had a little bit of brilliance from Prenter and Money Glass should have built on that, but instead it's Clan Aaron coming back with more in kind. Money Glass trying to build again, but look at the tackles, look at the players diving in and again another free and this is a bit frustrating for a money glass. They just can't get going. They've been fouled. I didn't mention it in the first half. Clan Aaron just stopping them at source. We saw one yellow card in the first half. One sin bin for Clan Aaron. Didn't make a difference. Carey. And really, when you look back and think about it, the penalty was huge at the start. Give Clan Aaron a bit of confidence and a perfect start. And now they come again. That's beautifully laid inside to Tierna Grimes. She's got one brilliant score already off her left, I think it was. She goes for one of her right, and I think she was fouled there. And the referee says, yes, she was as she kicked it. So this will be a chance from a free. And you'll see it again. But lovely inventive play with lots of options available. And this could be 1-9. And after Money Glass getting their first score from play, Clan Aaron have come back with one and now maybe a second one. Now Neve Murray missed one from this sort of position. In fact, it was closer in and more central, I think. But you would imagine that she won't miss this one. But has she? Well, actually she has. It's actually drifted and not even gone out of play. That's a little bit strange. So it must be more difficult at that end, I'm guessing. Neve McIntosh. Look at the pressure again as she tries to come out. Another free, but... Not much use to Money Glass. They get a good kick pass up to Connolly, though, and she finds a little bit of space. This is better. Move the ball quickly. That's how you stop fouling like that. But it's easier said than done. Now, Kerry pops a lovely ball into Connolly, and she works it in. This is better. This is a substitute. McCluskey, tough tackling going in on her there, though, when the referee says no foul. And eventually, I think he's going to hop that, is he? And you see there, Tigerish is the word I've used a few times for this defence from Clan Aaron, no it's free in is it? No it's a half substitution for Money Lass yep and it looks like Laura McCann is going off, if I know she's not she's just having a chat with one of the management team so I'm not quite sure who's going off, I see her now actually and it is Boyd possibly, I think it's Boyd who's gone off now, from the hop. Well won by Katie McCluskey. And she gets her free in. That's better from Money Glass. And Prenter will stride forward and pop that one over the bar. But they need a lot more than this. There's a shot from her low camera. No way to go. She takes her point. 26 is on for Money Glass. That's Leah Cassidy. The other game has gone to 9-4 for Breda. 1-6 to 4 points in that game. So 
So Breda looking like they could be playing money glass in the final. And they have met in the last couple of years in the championship, not in the final. And it's been one win for Breda, one win for money glass. But at this stage, it looks like it's going to be Clan Aaron in the final. And off they go again, Clan Aaron. 43rd minute. That one drops in to Rebecca Bradley. And you just know it's not your day sometimes. And that looked like an easy one for them. But instead, there's a goal chance here for Clan Aaron, possibly. No. Comes out. But it should have been a comfortable one for them to deal with. But Murray puts it over the bar in the end. And it's just all happening for Clan Aaron and Money Glass. You'd have thought that that would have been a, a bread and butter one to just sweep up there but instead it just bounced out of her arms and the next thing it's over the bar and this is turning into a horror day for Money Lass and Clan Aaron leading by 1-9 to 5 7 points up again now Prender followed again by McCambridge it breaks Cathy Carey's there to pick up the pieces there's a bit of urgency here for Money Lass but look at the amount of orange jerseys back there there's no way through. McCluskey has made an impact, but she's given it straight to Tierna Grimes. But every time that Money Lass have played it close in there, Clan Aaron have got bodies back and they've made so many interceptions. And they've broken Money Lass's hearts. And I think the way this is going, they are going to prevent them from getting back to their second final in a row. And they're going to be the first Armagh team to reach the senior final in the modern era and I say that because strangely enough when you go to the records as this goes over the bar again look at that for a superb finish from Neve Henderson I think it was and even though she was turning the wrong way she still got her boot on it and as I say when things go for you they go for you that's a great score and it's now 13 5 8 points up the point I was making that if you look at the records right back at the start 90, 1977 and 1978 the first ever two Ulster Senior Finals were between Mullahoran from Cavan and Liz Summon from Armagh. I think the Marleys had something to do with that. Here come Clan Aaron again. It's Mulligan. And it's Murray. Switches onto her left foot. That goes over as well. And Clan Aaron are running away with this game. They are having a field day out there. I don't think anybody would have predicted this. And Donna Moyne must be scratching their heads as well. And there's another tough challenge going in. That's going to be a free out. Yeah, Donna Moyne must be wondering what happened. Totally different kind of game, of course, when you go into the Lions Den and you have a game plan. This is a different kind of game. And right from the start today, and there again, they just can't do anything right, Money Glass. It's just not happening for them. This is a real shock to the system for them. In the final last year, they beat the mighty Donna Moyne. But Clan Aaron are cleaning up today. 111 to 5. Look at that scoreline. Nine points in it. And in the other game, it's a seven point gap. So it's looking like Breda against Clan Aaron. And here come Clan Aaron with a goal chance. This could bury it completely. And it's another goal for the Armagh girls. And this is a sensational performance by Clan Aaron on their home turf. It looks like they are going to create history by reaching the final for the very first time. Brilliantly finished. Great work all the way through. And it was the corner forward. Number 15, Avine Donoghue. Just 15 years old. And tomorrow night she'll be playing in the Arma minor final as well. Hoping to win it against Kalevi and play who, who do you think? Money Glass next Sunday. 2-11 plays 5. 17 plays 5. And Money Glass have just scored once from play. They keep trying. They keep going. Bradley. And that's a loose one again. And so easily pinched away by Dervla Coleman, who has had a terrific game. Kate Toe. Henderson. Plays one over the top. And again, it just drops so kindly for... Clan Aaron and it's going to be a free in and of course they're working hard to make it drop kindly but it's certainly been one of those games where things seem to have gone more for one team than the other. It's a tough one to take for Clan Aaron or for Money Glass.
2-12. Plays five points. 47 minutes gone. And barring a huge comeback. This is going to be a bit of a shock result. Well, it is wide open with Dunamoyne going out. And we're going to have new winners this year. But will it be Clan Aaron or will it be Breda? Armagh against Down. And I did say at the start, no Armagh or Down teams have ever won the Ulster Senior Club Championship. One of them's going to have to win it this year, the way things are going. Prender bursts out. Now, we haven't seen this too often, and that's high. I think it's going to the right. And it's just not happening for Orla or Money Glass. There was an element of resignation about the way that went wide from the rest of the team. They just know that this game is up and they just can't keep with this superb Clan Aaron team. They come out of Armagh after beating Carry Cruppen for the second year in a row. But they haven't a great record in Ulster. But this is a young, exciting team managed by James Daly last year and Gregory McGonagall this year. Lots of players who are coming through the Armagh setup and a few of them at Queen's as well. They're well organised, well drilled and very skillful. Eve McIntosh has to go back to McCluskey. No way through. Even over in the middle, there's nobody from Money Glass inside the 21. They're all sitting rather deep, so there's no options here at all. And Prender is further out the field, but she's been followed everywhere today by Clodagh McCambridge. Maria O'Neill, one of the Antrim stars of the last couple of years, but again, she's having to do it all herself, and Kerry comes in to help. But so many orange jerseys in there, and they have conceded a free there, but there's just no way through against them. They've been exceptional today. And Cathy is going to give it to Orla Prender and says, just pop it over. But it'll still leave them 12 points in arrears. It's over. End of the last 10 minutes. And this is one of the areas where Clan Aaron have been very good from their own kickouts. They've got possession and gone up the pitch rather easily and again. So easy for Neve Coleman to just pick up possession. And Money Glass just looks so leggy. That's a high challenge going in from Maria O'Neill. Accidental, but she could get a yellow here. As if they didn't have enough troubles. I think they're about to go down to 14. And it was similar to the one in the first half. And unfortunate for Maria. And an unfortunate day for Money Glass. A lot of their players are, as I say, minor champions. So they are waiting next Sunday. They'll have to go again next Sunday. And they're playing the Armagh champions. That'll be either Clan Aaron. Or Kalevi, who meet tomorrow night in Middleton. Referee holding things up. He's waiting for Maria O'Neill to cross the line on the far side. And a substitution is about to be made. 19, is it, for two for Clan Aaron, which would be Megan McCann, another, another of the girls who's at Queen's, coming on for Ashley Favell. And indeed, that is a switch. The other game is now 2-7 to 1-6 for Breda. So Errigal are staging a bit of a comeback. They've got a goal there. <laughs> Money Glass exasperated, I think, and the ball is going to be moved forwards. Well, there's no thrilling atmosphere the crowd aren't too animated but they're mainly very happy and you'll see that at the end they didn't expect to be strolling through this game but that's what's happening 
big performance from them. And I know the chairperson, Roisin Bell, was nervous before the game. And she would have been delighted if I'd been able to tell her, well, with 10 minutes to go, you're going to be so far ahead, there's going to be no worries at all. She's probably still a little bit nervous because here come Money Glass again. Cleona Griffin trying to make some progress, but she has been hunted down by Clodagh McCambridge. Cleona still going, and she does get it in towards McCluskey, but intercepted in there, I think, by Maeve Moriarty, who again has used all of her experience. 38-year-old who's just been in the right place at the right time, as have most of her teammates. We're at the stage, actually, where I'm going to take your contenders for player of the match quite a few obviously in orange but who do you think who played well today feel free to make a comment there actually i haven't been checking the live chat on the youtube coverage maybe i should do that that's where we'll get the messages or fire me a message on instagram at jerome quinn one or on twitter at jerome quinn i'll pick it up there Aaron absolutely bossing this but causing a little bit of a panic for themselves in there but they come unstuck and Maeve McCambridge always available what a revelation she has been in the forwards Avine Donoghue hope she's kept a bit of energy for tomorrow night ah, she's only 15 she'll be okay and there's a the third goal no it's not it's put wide I was wondering why the net didn't bulge should have been. Still 2-12 play six. That's 12 points in it. And that's just bashed forward with hope more than design. Fouled by O'Neill. And this game really is just petering out. At the end, there will be great celebrations, though. Clan Aaron will realise that they have seen a fantastic performance today. And they'll realise that history has been made. But for the moment, there's almost an eerie silence here. There's no need for them to cheer. The game's already won. Moriarty gives it back to Carvel. Great experience in the back line for Clan Aaron with some famous club names. Only Glass have got that one back though. Kerry, the captain. Can they finish with a bit of a flourish? O'Neill is held up, but illegally so. Substitution being made, and it's Eleanor Mallon, I think, coming on in place of Connolly for Money Glass for the last three and a half minutes of normal time. Trying to check the messages on the YouTube link for this game, but can't quite read them at the moment. Maybe they'll come up in a minute or two. Clan Aaron come out on top again. Keep going as a call from the crowd who have been mainly quiet. Another foul. Avian Henderson available as always. Kate Toe. You just wonder, is this a new generation for Clan Aaron? So many superb players down the years and a great history in ladies football. Moriarty just doing it cleverly there at the back and 
eating up time and keeping possession. They don't need to force it. Sinead McCleary, of course, down the years, a superb player for them who came back last year to help them win another county title. Oh, that one's been intercepted. And is she going to get there? She is. It's McCluskey. But orange jerseys converging on her. Griffin comes in, and that's a nice ball in there towards O'Neill. But she's an awful lot to do, the 19-year-old. She's trying to do it all herself, but again, tough tackling, and it's going to be a free from outside that area. thought it might go towards a penalty, but it's a free. And yeah, that penalty right at the start of the game, when you think about it, though, I don't think it was crucial overall, but it certainly set the tone and gave them a great platform. This is going to be a famous day for Clan Aaron. Another substitution. Clan Aaron player on the far side getting a round of applause. I think it was Grimes. And I could understand that round of applause. She's played extremely well. Money last seventh point of the game. Six of them from Freeze. And they will be very perplexed I would say at the way that this game has gone they came in with so much hope and it just has not happened for them brilliantly taken by Neve Coleman and that is Graham she hasn't gone off bottled up and money last get it back 26 there for them it is Cassidy who came on about 10 minutes ago but stopped on her tracks. Now can Clan Aaron finish with another score? Well, they're through here, and this could be the icing on the cake for the home team. There's shadows at that end of the ground. Doesn't matter. It's easily put over the bar. And is that McCann? No, I think it's actually Coleman. Her dad Tommy is over to the left here. Maybe a proud man at the end of this game. 16-10 in the other game. So looks like Breda Clan Aaron in the final. 60 minutes and 24 seconds and that's all it requires for clan Aaron to have closed out this game with a surprisingly one-sided victory over money glass who stopped the Dunamoyne juggernaut but they themselves have been stopped today by clan Aaron with an exceptional and dominant performance which i don't think anybody really saw coming apart from themselves but it's an historic win for them it's their first ever Ulster Senior Final. It's the first time an RMA team has been in the final since way back in 1978. A brilliant, brilliant performance by the team. I'm going to go out and try and get a word from some of the RMA Clan Aaron players if I can. There's a lot of people trying to leave to go around, but there's nice celebrations on the pitch, but the crowd are a little bit quiet, but I guess they don't need to be because they've just seen their team won rather easily and it wasn't the thriller that we expected but it's still a famous day for the team they've won 12 in 18 in Armagh but this is the first time that they've got to the senior final so I wonder can we work a way to get out on that pitch here they've all gone in for a huddle in the middle of the field but I'm going to go out there and try and get a word with one or two of them so I'm going to grab a microphone and no doubt the management and manager Gregory McGonigal will want to talk to them first and you see there what it means to them they are buzzing absolutely buzzing because they have come through today and beaten the team that beat Donna Moyne and Gregory having a word with them now and he is delighted a big smile on his face and no wonder and you see all of the experienced players in there with the young players what a blend they have what a smashing team and what a smashing performance and Gregory is going to have a few more words with them. And you know what he's saying. He's saying, calm it down. Get our heads right. And we will take on Breda in a couple of weeks' time. Look after yourselves. They have a minor final tomorrow night against Kalevi. 
And that is in Middleton. So a few of them have to play in that. It's all about rest and recuperation. They go again. And those girls will have to play money last if they get through next Sunday in the Ulster Club Minor Championship. Gregory pointing and explaining what he liked, I'm sure. And he's saying what the time is. He's saying maybe, right, take your time now, go and rest. I'm going to try and get out onto the picture and have a word with a few of the players. So bear with me while I walk and talk. The players, I can see. Kieran, my cameraman, I'm on the pitch. It's a little bit soft, but it's grand. Now, I wonder if we can pinch one or two of the clan to get a word with them. Captain, of course, is number 11, Neve Henderson. High fives all round. Let's see who we can get. Kieran's following me. A few. So we're looking for. Maybe number 11 when they're finished their high fives. But the goalkeeper as well, she'd be good. <laughs> Kath, could you come over for a wee word? We're on the live stream. Yeah, of course you. And could you get Anderson, the captain as well? We're over here. No, Mike's wasn't playing, you were playing. You were in goals. Not really. Now, you tried to fool me with this whole lawless thing, but you're Michael Linden. Yes, smackle it in at heart, but no, I've married a good <laughs> have to take his name. <laughs> I wasn't casting any aspersions yeah. on your man, though, but your dad, yeah. goalkeeper yeah. for our man. He's yeah. a lot of brilliant goalkeeper. From a young age, um, I think I was about under 14. Sorry, we're... Um, Take Maeve Moriarty, get her over. Hopefully now we're this, uh, we're trying to get into range here with the connections. Hopefully we're okay. So you're telling me you're a keeper. Your dad was a keeper. How proud would he be today? Oh, he's he's really proud. Um, me and my two sisters as well. They were both Max came on there, and then Grony was playing corner back. So we're a football and family, and and that's what we live for. Just football and and our family. So um, no, it's great great day out for everybody, and I'm um, so delighted to. Finally get in the final. We've been waiting a long, long time to get back or to get into a senior final. I've, I've never played in a senior final. So, you know, we've worked really hard this year, Greg and Sinead, and the girls themselves. Like, we've put in tremendous work. Um, so it's well deserved. Um, but Money Glass did put it up to us, but we were just thought we were stronger for them. So. Maeve Moriarty is trying to get away. I'm going to let you go and get her and bring her back over now because I want to talk to her. Oh, Neve's getting her. Neve's getting her. But here, you said it's a great day out. You're underplaying it a wee bit there and you did well. But tell me this. People expected the team that beat Donna Mound to get through to the final. And you blew them away today. Mm -hmm. That's what I said down to our preparation. Um, you know, Greg really done his homework like he does for every team that we play, even friendlies and that. Um, and, and we knew that... We knew that they were going to be good, um, and, and Donna Moyne, they, they've set the standard for years. Um, so, look, we're delighted to get over the line, really, really pleased to be in a final. Um, but yeah, our our girls all worked really hard from one till all the subs that came on. You know, we we knew our home pitch as well. You know, we, we know every inch of this grass. So, look, we're just delighted to get into the final. <laughs> you don't sound surprised at all. No, no, a bit of belief, and that, that is definitely one of the things that we, you know, that we have this year. We've so much belief within our team, we've such a big bond. Um, the younger girls coming through, like we even Donahue there, scored a goal under serious pressure. You know, she just, you know, I, we trust her, and she was only 15, you know, so there's definitely a lot of belief, and, and hopefully we can go on and win it. A blend of youth and experience is what yes. we say. Yes, <laughs> definitely a blend of youth and, and experience, like Laura Brown and, and even me of herself. Um, I'm actually in that category too. So, um, but yeah, that's that's what's winning us matches. Um, you know, the youth and, and the the experience as well. So, yeah, <laughs> they can't actually see. <laughs> well, I can see Neve and Maeve over there, over to the left. We're going to try and get a word with them. I'll let you go, Catherine. But they're just having a wee chat amongst themselves. So we'll bring the two, and we'll get a word with them about this result and this performance. Here come the Clan Iron girls. We're talking about a in there about a blend of youth and experience. Don't look at me. Is this a blend of youth and experience? Not any fight. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm, I'm up on. there, like at the, the later. So it's just experience and experience. Tell me, what about that? You blew them away. I mean, are you surprised? Yeah, I think I am. You know, after them coming last a couple of weeks ago, beating Dunamoyne, you know, and we know the standard. Um, Dunamoyne's been our sticking point for years, and, you know, we knew they were going to be a good team, but we didn't expect to win by that margin, so we're delighted. Um, like, sort of surprised, but at the same time, I knew we were, like, as prepared as we could be for that, and it felt like, you know, we believed that we could get it across the line, you know, and then we just did the simple things. We put our processes in place, and we got, like, just got the job done. There's nothing fancy about it. You also got a great start, a great platform with a penalty right at the start. I mean, it was a little bit fortunate maybe, but it helped. Um, definitely did. It settled you. If you get a goal at the start of the game, it's going to settle you, you know. Um, but we just we got it and then we moved on. It wasn't like we were dwelling on it. We just put the next process in place, you know. Yeah, it wasn't the only thing, but it was a great start. But the way it's played, the way it closed down, I mean, the difference for me was like when Money Glass were trying to defend against you, they dropped very deep. You guys defended very high. Every time that a Dunhamoyne or a money, money Glass player got the ball, there was three or four of you on it. Yeah, that's one of our standards this year is everybody has to empty themselves. Everybody's working. Everybody is pressing on the ball. No one's getting out easy. And that's our, that's our mantra this year, really, mm -hmm. is press high, work hard. And we've done that today and it showed. You put this into context for me of what, what it means for you. You're in the Ulster Senior Club final. No Armagh team has done that since, would you believe, Les Summon back in 1970 or 1978. The first two years of it, so really the modern era, you've created history here today. Um, I can't remember one day from the next, I'm that old at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be honest, like it's just, um, we just are taking it one game at a time, you know, we're just looking at today and then after we'll enjoy our, the win today and then come tomorrow, then we'll think about the next step. See all those cliches come out, but... No, I'm absolutely delighted that there's a different vibe in the camp this year. We know we are winners and we know that we have the belief we have no fear this year. And, you know, that's one of the things we really stand by is that go into each game with no fear. Whereas previous years we were going in as underdogs and we were playing as underdogs, whereas now we're in it to win it. So, yeah, hopefully we'll finish it out. In it to win it, I like that. And it looks like you're playing Breda there 4-5 or five up in the other game. So no down team or Armagh team has ever won it before, but change. Hopefully, and hopefully it's an Armagh team. <laughs> Just finally, who do you think played well for you today? I know it was a superb team effort, but there's always players stand up on different days, and the way you closed down all, all over the field, and there were terrific scores, but of course they had to come from great defending. I mean, Cloda at the back was Mark and Arlo Printer, followed her everywhere and was superb. Around midfield, Tierna Grimes was excellent, but you tell me. Um, I was just saying either I thought the Coleman's were excellent, both of them. Um, just thought they do all the dirty work, all the unseen work, and they were just on the end of nearly every move we had today. So they'd be my pick. Yeah, um, I would say, uh, God, I couldn't pick one. Like I just think everybody was so good. I think Maeve was a brick wall there at the back. Um, Nave Coleman always in midfield, like just such a workhorse. And uh, Cloda did a great job on one of their main players. So she she was really good as well. So that's what you are, Maeve. You're a brick wall. Well, it looks like I'm done. <laughs> well, you know, the family spirit, the McAlinden name, the Moriarty name, famous names around this area, and the sets of sisters all over the field as well. You really, really played like a family today. That's the one thing we pride ourselves on from day one, from the Marie Hoy days. It's always been, I think, that has really formed us as what we are. We're just one big family, you know, and it all stems back to Marie and what we all experienced together way back then, you know, and it's just came right through the club. Like, um, do you know whenever like people be talking about like your club being your family that really rings true in Connor and your club's your family. And Marie's sister Roisin is now the club chair. What would Marie make of this today? Oh, I feel like she was in that room with us, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. she really was. She would just be, oh God, I can see her like in her absolute element. So it means an awful lot that we're going to go out there in two weeks time and she's going to be with us yeah. again. Yeah. So this wasn't done overnight? No, it really wasn't. Uh, how many years am I here now? Like 20 odd years. It's been building from then. Yeah. Do you know? What do you think of all these young girls? My God, like I idolise them all. <laughs> I'm their fan girl, like I really am. Did they call you a brick wall? Um, <laughs> the likes of like we even O'Donoghue there, like she's she reminds me of Neve Handy when she came on the same. Neve was only 15, 16. She broke on the senior team, and even Donoghue's another one of those characters. Um, and you know she just has settled in really well. But it's just 
the like the talent is coming through in numbers at under 16 or minors right tomorrow night in the championship and you know there's just there's another five or six 15 16 year olds standing on the sideline they're more than capable and staffing up you know so um, we may be in a, a final in two weeks time and it's I'm just grateful that those girls are going to get to experience it too and know that it is possible. I'm getting flashbacks to 2002. The future's bright, the future's orange. Listen, <laughs> 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 right, girls, I like them for that on today. Thank you. We have the final in a couple of weeks, and it looks like Breda against Clan Aaron. What a performance by Clan Aaron today. Two great games. We've been delighted to live stream for you. Apologies that the other live stream apparently didn't go so well certainly in the first half, but hopefully you got it in the end. It was free to view from Ulster ladies, and we'll be streaming the final as well in a couple of teams. But for now, from the whole team here in Clan Aaron, it's goodbye.